All right, what is up, YouTube? Welcome back, guys. Want to do another informative style video going over EC or PPM? You know, uh, what are they? You know, what is the difference? Um, is one better than the other? You know, which one should I choose? Kind of thing, right? So, I wanted to go over some background information on them, kind of go into what they both are, as well as, you know, which one I, I use and which one I think and recommend you should use, and uh, go from there. You know, give you some information so you can also make your own decision. So to start off though, um, both of them are, are gonna be ways, usually there's meters you'll get, to measure um, you know, kind of the content, the nutrient content of your uh, feed, of your batch tank or whatever it is. And that's what most of us are gonna be using these meters for. And they come in those two forms of measurements, right? So to start off, EC, or to start off with EC, EC stands for electric conductivity. Um, basically, it passes an electric current through the solution, you know, in this case, probably your nutrient mix, uh, and measures how easily it's able to pass the charge from point A to point B, usually in the form of your meter, little probes at the end, right? So it's moving it from there and there. The more ions present in the solution, you know, in your water, uh, ions being, you know, the salts or AKA nutrients, um, means the more available electrons there are to transfer that charge from that point A to that point B, um, you know, giving you higher electrical, electric conductivity, AKA higher, you know, EC values, right? So that's kind of how that works in a nutshell. Now where PPM, very, very similar, PPM is gonna stand for parts per million. Um, this measures the mass of a chemical or contaminant, you know, whatever they put in, uh, per unit of volume of water. So it's the contaminant or chemical they put within the water, they measure that in parts per million. Now, the biggest difference, besides, you know, how, they how they're determining these measurements, obviously, is, is with PPM, PPM has multiple scales. And what I mean by that is, so if you get an EC meter, for example, you have one value, no matter what company you buy it from, EC is measured one way, always the same way, that's it. PPM, even though the premise of how it's measured is the same, they're measuring, a, that's why it's very vague. It says a chemical or contaminant per unit of volume of water. Now, the re, now what those scales mean, you know, why there's different scales, and you may not even know they had different scales, is it's, it's based on what chemical or what contaminant they actually use to measure in that water. Now, there's a lot of PPM scales. The most common PPM scales you're gonna see in like a hydroponic style setting, you know, growing kind of thing, is going to be your 500, your 650, and your 700. I've seen the 650 also listed as 640. I don't know where the semantics are in the difference between that. Uh, they seem kind of interchangeable, so if one of you know, let me know. But for the sake of argument, uh, we'll do 500, 650, and 700. If you see 640, that and 750, or that and 650 are like the same thing, though. But now there's different scales in different companies, or in sometimes different parts of the country, or different parts of the world, I mean, in different countries, will use different scales. So if you think you're, you know, I need to hit uh, this measurement with my PPM, you could be completely off, even though your meter is saying you're hitting it, because they're basing their measurement on a different scale. So it kind of gives a very big opportunity for error because you could just mistakenly be using a different scale or may not know what your scale is, or maybe the company that's providing you the target, they don't list what scale they're going off of. And then there you go. Now we have some confusion. We have some, you know, you have this opportunity for error, right? And you, you know, mistakes can happen even when you're paying attention because you just simply didn't know or you just don't have the information. So you're just doing the best you can with what you got, right? Now, the biggest difference between these scales, cause you're like, okay, well, what, what's the difference is, is let's just say 500 and 700, right? So a, five, a 700 scale, the contaminant that they use, it's gonna be like potassium chloride, whereas a 500 scale is gonna use the sodium chloride, hence giving a difference in you know parts per million because they're using different things to base these measurements on. And that's why you have so many scales. So it's not always intuitive. If you have a PPM meter, there's nothing wrong with it. It works just as fine as an EC meter. You're just gonna to want to make sure you confirm what scale that is. Reach out to the company if it's not listed in a little pamphlet or brochure on the back of the box. If you're getting target PPMs to be, you know, that it's, you know, hit this. Okay, 
what what scale are you telling me to hit that on? You know, is it a 500? Is it a 700? Is it a 650? You know, you know, you need to know these things in order to be as accurate as you possibly could be. And if you're not measuring with PPMs or ECs, uh, you need to start. It's the best way. I mean, unless you're just growing all natural outside and letting the ground do its work, it's very important when you're making nutrient mix to be able to know what you're mixing because you can have a pretty big disparity between the 500 and the, and the 700 causing you to cause nutrient deficiencies or nutrient toxicities and you just can't figure out why even though because you're hitting the targets you're supposed to be hitting or you're like I'm way underneath but you're still having issues but you're on the wrong scale or you could be on the wrong scale right so it could be one of those things that's an easy oversight you may not even think about you may not even known about so it's very important so which one is better there is not one better. There is, there, no, no one is better than the other because they both measure things very accurately. Just one has multiple scales to it. So which one would I pick in that case? I used to do PPM back in the day. I have switched the last two years or so to uh, e using EC pretty much exclusively because of that. It just simplifies everything. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about what, what scale I'm on or what scale they're you know referencing me to. It just makes things easier. So it's not inherently better, but it takes it's it just makes things simpler and it takes out that possibility of there being a mistake, you know, by me quickly reading through something or not paying attention to the scales. So it just makes it, you know, more error proof and you know just simpler, right? Now, what company you get your EC or PPM meter from really doesn't matter. If you can get any good company, you know, that has a reliable meter, no matter which company you choose with, I would highly recommend to make sure you have calibration fluid and to check your calibration. Um, if it's a new one, you might want to do it like after the first couple months, especially if you see something wonky, but I do it between every run. I have run very inexpensive ones before. They have Vivasan, Vivasan. They have 20, it's like 20 or $25 to get both your, your pH and your EC meter. It says TDS slash EC, I think at the top. I had horrible experiences with those. They drifted off where I was recalibrating every week. I tossed them. I went back to HANA, H-A-N-N-A, uh, -N -N -A, which I've used them in the past. Um, had great success. I've been using it again now. No issues. I still recalibrate or at least check my calibrations between each run and they're pretty much dead on all the time. Sometimes it'll drift, but you know, that's what recalibrating is for, you know, just to make sure. Um, maybe you'll get Vivasun and you'll be good with it. I know a lot of people with like Blue Pan, I think, and they seem to be amazing. Um, I just like to get a waterproof or water resistant one. So in case I accidentally let it go and it drops into the solution, I don't have to, you know, buy a new one or have two for backups or something. But there you go. That's it. There's EC, there's PPM, there's the difference. That's what they are. My recommendation being EC just for simplicity and you know to make things a little bit more error proof, but you can use whatever you want. There's nothing wrong with using PPM. You just wanna make sure you know what scale you're using and what scale you're being recommended to use when targets are provided. But other than that, I'll end it here. Peace out YouTube. As always guys, happy growing. See you next time.